the ringside beer show welcome Episode back guys 12 welcome back how are you guys been good i'm glad to hear <laughs> yeah dude how you been i've been doing well how about yourself i can't complain man dude it was uh mason's birthday this uh what was it yesterday it was big three oh, yeah big three came through dude uh, we both got the same gift <laughs> me and you. yeah Great minds think alike man yeah no i was kind of glad that we did get the same gift because that meant uh that we picked out something good so yeah <laughs> was yeah it was all good man that. so so yeah. they uh they took um yours to uh grandma's house so oh, nice. play. So, it was oh, like, yeah. so it worked out. So it was like, all right, we have one here. Cool. We have one over there. So we're all, we're all screwed, man. Yeah, I'm glad. And we gave the gift receipt, too, because, you know, sometimes that stuff happens. And we kind of, um, not that we expected it, but we kind of were like, the, you never know. Hopefully he didn't have that already. So yeah. when we brought it and they told us that, we we're like, oh, well, here's the gift receipt just in case. No, nah, it was all good, man. Because, I mean, <laughs> dude, you remember when you were kids, you always had, like, that one toy. And then it'll break and you'll have, like, one piece missing. And then... Mm -hmm. Do the same thing. So he's like, oh, he's hyped that he he's, uh, really likes the little characters and all that. It's crazy because I didn't even think about that. I was like, oh, yeah, you can have two. Oh, all right. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I got two of them, you know. Sorry, <laughs> bro. Good. I was barely able to have one as a child. So, <laughs> you know, we out here, you know, doing things that we didn't do as a kid. It's all good, bro. It's all yeah, good. Um, dude, the fights <laughs> this weekend. Man. Insane. Insane. From top to bottom. Dude, tears. Well, not full on tears. I was like, it was one of those, like, misty moments where it's like, just. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it let um. It first started off with a lot of violence and a lot of just execution, and then it came all the way down to a lot of emotion and a lot of um, just sympathy because you understand and you feel yeah. and you empathize. So definitely, but we'll get right into that when yeah. the fight recap. We're start. definitely going to get into that for yeah. sure. But let's start with uh, the art giveaway. Oh my goodness! We're gonna have we're gonna say <laughs> that towards the end, but we we're gonna select the winner on this episode and. Someone's going to win this could be painting. Yeah. And this is kind of sweet. I kind of like, I was like, yo, I kind of wish I, I was in the contest so I can win this. Um, <laughs> Should have had your wife. Join. I know, right? Be like, dude, uh, I kind of, uh, it's Khabib's last fight. There's no more, you know. <laughs> this right here could honestly end up being worth millions of dollars. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just saying. Maybe. It could One possibly, day. there's a potential, there's a percentage that it could possibly be worth a million dollars. I'm Dude. just saying. But some lucky winner, a ringside beer show winner, will win this at the end of their episode. So stay tuned. We appreciate you guys, and we'll get right into the current events. Yes. First off, we have Jose Aldo and Marlon Vera have verbally agreed to fight on UFC 255 on November 21st. Dude, when I saw this, I was pumped, dude, because it, the it's the the styles that they just match up. They're both strikers. They're, they're, this is not going to go to the floor whatsoever at all. You know, maybe Jose Aldo might take it to the floor if he's losing, but dude. Chito Vera, Jose Aldo, this is going to be a striking clinic. Yeah, I definitely see it being a striking clinic. Um, I see Jose Aldo having to go down to that type of style of jiu-jitsu on the floor because he's going to get dropped by Chito Vera. That's just how I see it. Um, I've been wrong up until this point. So <laughs> don't just, jinx it, man. Don't, we jinx, just, don't jinx it for <laughs> Chito Vera, bro. I'm kind of trying to double jinx it, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse psychology, you know. I'm going to say it and know that it's wrong and then acknowledge that it may be wrong so that way it ends up being right yeah and then reverse we put, psychology and we put this in the current events because it's not uh, a fight announcement just yet they haven't announced Correct. it they kind of just been verbally talking it back and forth they both agreed on it so yeah uh, it's, it's on uh, current events it's something that's currently going on that they're talking about so yeah. we're excited to um potentially have that matchup yeah. see that come to fruition that's the goal. And this wasn't. This was on MMA Uncensored. I didn't see this on ESP, uh, ESPN MMA. I didn't see this on the MMA Fighting, which is kind of surprising. MMA Fighting or MMA Junkie didn't have this. So I believe these. This is one of those Instagram pages that has those types of um, like leaky rumors and stuff. leaky stuff. Yeah, you know they they definitely have some some pretty dope content that when you go through the page, it you know keeps you into it. So. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they probably heard some good, you know, some good juice. And yeah. This is a potential fight because, honestly, Jose Aldo versus um, my boy um, Brian Ortega, Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley, okay. Forgot his name because he just lost. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ray. I'm just saying. Damn. Stay relevant. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm hey, no more sugar for uh, you, bro. You know what I'm saying? getting a little salty no. over here. No. I'm not being salty. I just wanted to entertain the people. But with that, Dude. With that being said, that was a potential fight that could have happened, right? So um, this plug-and-play plug plays really well. Yeah. 
So we're excited. I Hopefully they make that official, and, man, that'll be an exciting fight. Yeah, then that means you guys heard it here first. We'll see. Well, it was on MMA you Uncensored. Did, well, because yeah. you didn't go to MMA Censored, so you heard it from us here first. Yeah, but shout out to MMA Uncensored. <laughs> shout out to MMA Uncensored, for sure. All right, here we have uh, Dustin Poirier put up a, a lightweight division uh, lineup, I guess you would say, right? Of yeah, all the, the top contenders yeah, to man. fight for the light. Uh, we're the vacant now, light, uh, lightweight, lightweight uh, belt. Yeah, this is definitely the nicest lineup of the 2020 division. I mean, look at these guys, dude. One, two, three, four, uh, four dudes, five, five dudes up there have um, fought for belts. This is like you know, uh, I I want to see them put on a belt horse style of a like tournament. I know, want a tournament? I know they're not going to do, do that. No. I know. I know they're not going to do that. But I'm talking about just a, a one-night event, all these guys. Three well, fights in one night. You got to fight to get to the top, win that belt. Just a random, you know, like. Well, all right. So no, then. I'm just happy. Well, let's get right into it then. Uh, who would you give it to then? Who would? All right. So Gaethje <laughs> just lost, but he was the interim champion, right? The only other interim champion was Dustin Poirier. Oh no, then Tony Ferguson as well. Tony Ferguson was an interim champ, but he lost. But he to lost Dustin, to Dustin. To Gaethje. Dustin, I'm sorry, to Justin. Yeah, Dustin lost to Justin. Right? No, this is so crazy because <laughs> it's like the I know MMA math doesn't work out. So and not in this division. So Dustin beat Justin. Dustin Poirier beat. Justin Gaethje, yes. Okay. Tony Ferguson lost to Dustin Poirier. Did, did he? I don't even think they fought. No, to Justin to Gaethje. Justin. Excuse me. Justin Gaethje. I know, okay. it's a tongue twister, bro. <laughs> it's I'm just funny. getting it's extremely funny. confused here because I'm trying to justify who gets the next title shot. Yeah, uh, would you give it to Connor? <sighs> Like, obviously, we're looking at the left screen of this. We have Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson. Obviously, those are the top contenders. Uh, who is it? Dan Hooker on, so the bottom right, on the bottom right? I don't think he would be even... I don't even know. Like, not to sound mean or, you know. He could be the welcome fight for Michael Chandler. I wouldn't mind that. So, let's you match what? those that, two cats oh, up. That's a beautiful matchup right there. Because that can, way, yes. we can see how, where he's at in the division. Exactly. Boom. We'll take out a five or six guy. Let's see if he's, you know, willing, if he's willing and able to be in that position. So, we'll match those two cats up. So, that leaves these four cats, okay? Now. now Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor have already, like, verbally agreed to a fight in January uh, 23rd, right? They're talking about it. Yes, but they've they fought at one forty five way back in the day. So this is what I this is what I would like to see. Match Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier for the the vacant belt. Have Connor Tony fight for the number one spot. Whoever wins out of the Justin Dustin match can fight Tony Connor. So you would you have them on the same card? F- bruh, duh. All right, so who would be the main event? We're talking about the cheddar because if... It, who would be the main event? Because if you're fighting for titles, Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje would obviously get that title. Connor, unfortunately, Connor, has to acknowledge that he may not lead a UFC card. Oh, although dude, you're he's out of your mind if you don't think they're going to put uh, Connor he don't in got the a belt. number one spot. He don't got a belt. Yeah, but for, he don't got dude, a belt. Connor's bigger than the damn belt now. He's been bigger than the belt. So. When, when have you had a title fight and then a non-title fight? Not you, never, you have but, to have the title fight last. But not never, but I'm just saying it's Connor, though, you know? All right, but at a certain he point... Ha- you, he has to be the main at face At a certain on the point, poster. somebody's going to have to, like, say, I don't care if you're Connor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, all these guys. At the end of the day, you don't have a belt, so you have to... You're going to be the co-main. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if you would do that. Especially if you've been sitting out so long. I know Connor might not like that, but... That's tough balls, mate. <laughs> Dude, I think you would have that as the uh, the number one contender. Why? Because Connor gets, uh, how, how would you say? Well, like, you don't have to have him on the same the, card. But he gets I'm the just tickets saying. in the seats. You know, he puts people yeah. in the seats. But, Especially for 2021 when they're going to need that bounce back bread. Oh, yeah. Especially. I, I would, yeah, I would have, I would have all freaking three of these fights. 
Why not? On the same card. You could do that. Why wouldn't you? You could do that. Then you just solve the whole uh, lightweight division. You figure out what's going on. and all right, we're That's all- just in a perfect world. But, I mean, like you said, Connor's not going to agree to that. Why wouldn't he agree with that? Because he's not going to be the last fight. He'll be the co-main. He would not be the co-main. There's no I almost, way. I almost, I almost, I almost feel no like I would, I would bet you anything that Connor would be the headliner. And the, the actual champion would be... Uh, so then the Con- fight between so Dustin then Perkins. Connor has to fight for the belt. So then it's Connor, Justin, Tony, Dustin, and and tell me I did not bring that up in the last episode where I said like, hey, if Justin Gaethje wins, you did. Dustin Poirier is going to get sweeped under the rug, and Connor's going to sw- uh, get that first place. Now I wonder if he's going to keep his word to Dustin Poirier. Because then then and if let's say you do make that, because Dustin Poirier ain't going to fight Tony Ferguson or Woody. No, <sighs> dude. It, the the one fifty five pound division is you, so. You kind of you have to stay active though. That's that's where I'm a little torn. It's like if you're not getting the title shot, you got to take somebody who's next, you know, and somebody who's in the way. Well, the thing take Connor wanted to fight three times a year. He couldn't because of everything that happened this year. Obviously, Connor is big money, and Dana White did not want to lose out on the gates. Now, gates are starting to come back at 50%. Obviously, if you're a Conor fan, you're going to drop money at the gate for his first fight return. Now, this was, this is what stinks is that either if they're going to make Justin Gaethje, which I feel like he should be the first one in line, or have the first, uh, or have a Dustin Poirier, but they're not going to make that one. For, hands down, they're not, because they need the big fight to start off the year 2021. It would have to be Justin Gaethje versus Connor. Right. And if you want to make it see who's the next next one in line would be just Justin Poirier versus Tony Ferguson under as a co main to to have the number one spot. It just doesn't it just doesn't tickle my fancy as much as the first option where you have Dustin, Justin, Connor, Tony. Cause we need to see that fight where he fights McNuggets. <laughs> you spend uh, spend years in the making. He, but this he, is the thing. This is the thing. Justin Gaethje, I, I don't want to say destroyed, but kind of beat up Tony Ferguson pretty bad. Well, I'm going to refer back to your statement where Tony may have just had a long fight camp, and let's justify it. Who knows? He may have just. You know what? Is, true. Who knows, man? Who knows? He could have had, you know, like you said, a bad camp. I don't. I don't agree with that. I'm more, you know, but. Well, how about Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson? Would you run that one back and have a uh, Dustin Poirier and Connor have their fight? Because that's what they agreed on. It's just tough because then, I mean. Because that's what they agreed on. Does Tony fight for the belt, though? Yeah, he would fight for the belt. because. But he's coming off of a loss. Yeah, right? but he, so. he gave. So he gave Justin Gaethje a chance when how many days notice? I mean, morals and, like ethics, morals and ethics and values tell you that that Tony's going to be a good man. He's been effed over by the UFC and I, has no incentive, no reason to be faithful to Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, to nobody. I just think... I mean, go back to his last interview on Ariel Hawani. Yeah. He, uh, he yeah, expressed just, himself very well. <laughs> I just think, I'm like, dude, if you're going to... If you're going to have a... A fight. Well, then just Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor already agreed. Justin Gaethje was the uh, it can't interim, be, interim champion. It can't be for the belt then. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? Because Justin just fought for the belt. So he would have to. So you're saying don't give him a chance even though he was the number one contender? Make it an interim. Why would you make that one an interim? You still have to. You have to so then you would just get Justin. Because then they have Ga- to fight this guy. Cause so then you would. So you're saying interim title again. Tony Ferguson and Justin Gaethje would have to fight again for an interim title. No, I'm saying interim for Connor and Dustin. Oh, to see make who that gets fight it? interim fight, and then have them actually fight whoever the winner that is. Actually, fight Justin Gaethje for the real belt, and then what? We'll have them as the main event, of course, because it would have to be for a belt, so that you create a interim belt. Yep, for just for them too, and then that would be the number one contender. Obviously, we make all make an know. interim belt. Uh, two interim belt for the same division and then have the fight all on the same card. And then have the fight on the same card. <laughs> there you go. Connor, you get, oh, your, you get your fix. I, I hope I hope the UFC figures this one out. But the Dan Hooker versus uh, Mike, uh, 
Dude. Michael Chandler. Michael that, Chandler. That yeah. one makes the most sense, and that one has, you know. Yeah. Nobody that else. one's probably the easiest one to make out of this whole bunch. Yeah. That's it. Or Have if them Paul too. Felder wanted to come. Paul Felder. He could welcome in Michael Chandler, too. Dude. Yeah, but do that Styles, that man. four mix up. Oh my god! Because you obviously have to have Connor for the main event, just for the eyeballs. All right, I'm sick of Connor. God damn it! Because <laughs> let's knock off this picture right this here. This guy right no, it's just because you know, like this guy's coming off some losses. You know, like we got to take away a little of the juice, man. What? What? He's coming off losses. What are you talking about? His last fight was uh, Cowboy Cerrone. He destroyed him in. 40, oh, okay, 40 we're talking. Okay, besides that, which one was the one before that? Khabib. Uh, you know what's crazy? Floyd Mayweather. You know what's crazy? Khabib. Connor went four rounds with Khabib. Or maybe Khabib just wanted to beat him up he for did four give rounds. Con- he did give Khabib the only loss of one round that he's ever had in his well, he, career. It's he, had two, he had two uh, rounds loss, losses on the... Well, Khabib. He's only I lost don't know two the rounds. statistics, so I'll leave that to you. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless... Uh, you know, I, I'll give Connor the respect, but at the end of the day, he, you know, he's been. I oh, we had airplane mode. This is such a rookie move. Rookie. Uh, you can put Some on. Do not disturb that little moon right there. <laughs> oh, I already put it on airplane, didn't I? No, nah, just go to shows on airplane. On go to, yeah, no, <laughs> this is gonna be on the podcast right now. <laughs> yep. I apologize, rookie move, guys. That's all right. Hit hit the moon, dude. <laughs> Look at. And one day, all right, it's all good, man. Let's just fix this while we talk about it. So, <laughs> n- so then Connor, I think, dude, you have to have Connor versus Dustin Poirier. They already agree to it. Man's man, I'll honor your word, and that's that, right? I I would say yes, personally. Yeah. Um, but there's no ethics, morals, or values in a in a sport where they punch you in the face. <laughs> Dude, your struggle sitting here. Let me help you with that phone, dude. It's not. It's not me. It's the TV. It's still connected. It's still connected. Let's see. Bluetooth off. What the heck did you do, brother? People just don't. Oh, know you're how on to... airplane mode, man. Oh, that's why I didn't. Yeah, that's okay, why. I understand. Yeah, that's all right. I got you. I got Some you. Some people just don't know how to not call on <laughs> podcast day. Everybody knows we shoot on Monday, uploaded <laughs> by Tuesday. Don't you see the tag on YouTube, dude? <laughs> Go ahead, keep on talking, man. I'm just I'm, this I, is gonna be a classic I episode just, of I just wanna apologize because this is probably the most <laughs> rookiest thing. And the person who's calling has to tell me the, probably the most irrelevant stuff. Like, hey bro, what are you doing? You wanna play some Xbox? You wanna play some Call of Duty? <laughs> no, more like the power's yeah. back on and like, okay, well I'm not at home, so It's all thanks. right. Thanks. It's gonna be on the episode though, so I'm gonna shout them out, dude. Shout kidding. them out. It was uh, who was it? My grandma. Grandma. It's all right. It's <laughs> grandma though. Grandma's calling. She's showing love. It's I love all, my grandma. It's all right. Everyone, yeah. you know. All right. Let's go to uh, some uh, some Lopez news. If Lopez is yes. going to stay at lightweight, the fight I like to see would be versus Ryan Garcia. This is Bob Arum. Now, this would be a, exciting on paper, but I think Lopez is a little just. Might be a little bit too big for Ryan Garcia. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, this um, this gives you the the tingles, you know, like okay, two big names, uh, you know, some excitement in that division. He's staying down at lightweight. He's not gonna go chase that fourth belt. Um, that's not what we want to see. Um, no. but anyways, you know, if they make that fight happen, I think Theofoma Loma is just way too big of a person um, compared to Ryan Garcia. I think Ryan Garcia has super quick hands, and he's you know he's definitely um, climbing up the ladder. But I think that would just be a little bit of I think too, Lopez, too Lopez big a has bite. Too Lopez big a bite has down. too much of the power, yeah. and he'll he'll eat one to throw one. And I well, hands down Lopez will and probably KO Garcia. Yeah, he's coming off of just beating. Lomachenko. So, I mean, you know, that's a lot of momentum. Yeah. To um, put Ryan Garcia in front, I think that would be a little tough yeah. um, for Ryan Garcia. So, that's just my opinion. No, I, and I agree with that. It's, uh, I think, a little bit too soon. Bob Arum, I don't know what you're trying to do, but. <laughs> Bob Arum's trying to make some bread. Oh, he's just trying to make he any knows kind he's of bread. Tr- exactly, because he's just trying to get the money while he can at Dude, any point in time. 
Dude, Oscar versus Dana White. Let's do it. 2021. I would pay cat ash money for that. Now, we don't have a slide or anything about this, but did you see Oscar the Oya saying, like, I'll let bygones be bygones? I'm already past that. You saw his video? I refuse. No, I've not so, seen that, but I refuse. Dana White, so, don't ever forget. Don't ever forgive. So, this is what he said. He's kind of saying, like, oh, you know, things are, let's bygones be bygones. And, um, the funny thing at the end is it was almost like, okay, I'll stay in my lane in boxing. You stay in your lane in MMA when Dana White is going to start his own boxing thing. And I just thought it was funny. It was almost like another, that last little diss. Like, that, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, um, like we're let's all just good. forgive each other. But, you know, let's just stay in our lanes. Yeah. Like, dude, you. <laughs> like, excuse if, me, bro. Yo, I can Oscar, do what I want, yo, my if, dude. If Connor wanted to fight Canelo, you would be all about it. But because he fought Floyd, you were hating you know he's he's trying to play the fence on both sides, yeah. trying to play that purist side, and then he's trying to play that I need bread because cocaine's expensive side. <laughs> That's from Dana White, though. <laughs> per, per Dana White, Dana White's accusations. Yeah. All right, then we have some <laughs> uh, updates on Anthony Joshua. Bob Aaron back at it again, and yeah. uh, he said uh, in quotations, we're all set with that. It's a 50-50 deal. Let the two guys have their fights in December. They both win. I think within three hours, we can finalize any de details that are outstanding. It's not rocket science. And that was him explaining uh, a little bit about the Joshua and Fury uh, deal. Yeah. And I I think we uh, covered it. We had the uh, Tony um, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. They were talking about mid next year having the fight. Yes. May what was it? May uh, April April through June was the um, targeted date, and then the uh, rematch in the clause was set for either November like, or December. Yeah, but get, uh, dude, if they're gonna have the fight, sink with a mile, one hundred percent. Like, what other date would you have that big fight? Yeah, seriously. Uh, or you just fight around um, International Fight Week, which I believe is in July. But that's yeah, but that's the UFC International Fight Week. Well, of course, but you want to you want to you want to ride that wave. People are spending money. It's Fight Week. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's why you would have it on Cinco de Mayo. I don't think who uh, who else fights on Cinco de Mayo? Canelo, but Canelo ain't gonna have a fight by then. He no, a, he's suing uh, Golden Boy. Yeah, at this point, he's sitting on the shelf. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't gonna get a fight. So why not have this Cinco de Mayo done? Done deal. Everyone celebrate. I'm okay with that because my yeah. birthday's May 14th. So. There you go. Put a little, for your birthday, brother. Put, yeah, put a little show on for your boy Smooth. Smooth. All right, what's the last one? We have John Jones calls out Khabib fans. Now, we have a little video. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Th this is from John Jones' Instagram, so. I'm talking to all you Khabib fans out there. 15 world titles to your guys' four. And you guys are really talking about who's the best fighter ever? You guys are joking, right? 15 to four? Are you guys kidding me? The only person that could possibly come back and challenge my record and what I've done in the UFC is possibly George St. Pierre. He would have to come back and win two championship fights to tie me. And I'm not even retired yet. I'm 33 years old. I got a whole nother chapter to go through. You guys are nuts. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys all have a great day. 15 world championships to four. And if all you guys are going with this, he's more dominant argument. The guy just recently started fighting elite level competition. Could you imagine me against the number 10th ranked guy? Dude, speaking true. Honestly, that was speaking true. Now, I think you should have gave Khabib his moment, right? After his win. Like, I'll let you... It's kind of hard, though, when somebody's taking your name and stepping on it and spitting on it and pissing on it. Are you talking about John Jones? I'm offended, yes. Oh, okay. I mean, come on. John Jones is daddy over here. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, <laughs> there's no biological test <laughs> that proves that John Jones is my father. So, so, no, but that is true. I mean, he is... I mean, he ain't wrong. He ain't yeah, wrong, let's, dude. Let's just di uh, let's just dilute it, right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, I'm going to take it there. Let, let's just dilute it. Four, four titles to 15. Um, some some of these names are pretty good, right? Conor McGregor. Um, uh, Dustin Poirier. J Dustin Poirier. Justin, Justin Gaethje. Gaethje. Um, okay, but these guys aren't, you know, former champions, like legit champions, like such as Shogun Rua, uh, Leota Machida. Uh, who else? Chael Sonnen. Um, 
Well, Chelsea was never a champion. Okay, well, you know what I'm saying? He fought championship level, you know, continuously. Rashad Evans. Rashad Evans. <laughs> None, nevertheless. I mean, we're out here just throwing names, but at the end of the day, it's the resumes, right? And you, you stack up the names, you look at the names compared to who um, Khabib has fought, and it's really not a discussion. Now, at this time, um, we're going to give him all the praises because he deserves it, and he is going through <clears throat> the most difficult time, right? And he decided yeah. to provide us with the most purest form of entertainment um, during, you know, his lowest time. Yeah. I will, I will go there. <clears throat> but um, with that being said, when you start going talking about pound for pound, we're talking about John Bones Jones, guys. Well, would you say he's the pound for pound at 155? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, obviously yeah. John Jones is because um, you know, who do you who do you compare to? You got uh my boy the my boy the um Hawaiian cat. Max Holloway? No, fit at fifty five. He um fought like uh he gets in trouble all the time. BJ Penn. Oh, so hold he, up, you're not bringing up BJ he Dude, he went was on a what thirteen, fourteen losing streak. I'm just saying. Okay, so when he held the belt at that, I'm talking about BJ Penn in that, in that division. So. Yeah, in that division. All right, so he had God. Let me let me think this right. He had, I believe, two belts at that time. He had one was right. it one one forty five and then one fifty five. Yeah, but he never had them. You know, at the same time. But um, if I'm not mistaken, he only had he only defended the belt three times. Defended it more than Connor defended his belts. <coughs> yeah, but we're talking about Khabib. But th- okay, we're also talking about the best, um, you know, fifty-five well, pounder in that division. So Connor not in the discussion. Oh no, he's not. Right. So this is what I'm. That's what. I, that's what I'm saying. But you gotta like, give Connor. There's Connor. Is just about that bread, dude. It's all about that money. I feel you. I'm about the cheddar too. But I'm just saying, we're talking about. We're just talking about the division and like the the best people who yeah. who's reigning that division. <clears throat> people will try to throw the Connor out there. They'll try to throw the. Khabib out there because, uh, you know, he's fought, you know, these guys. But I feel like there's other people that have fought better level competition. GSP? GSP? Yeah. Demetrius Johnson, now, although it's flyweights, he's defended that belt so many times. And he doesn't get the respect he deserves. He was definitely one of the pound-for-pound pound greatest fighters. One of them. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse was the best ever. He That's never got what the respect. I'm saying, bro. Mighty Mouse was the best ever. Ever to ever do Shout out it. to the homies with big ears. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. it's too easy. Oh, it's too oh, easy. Oh, you got bro. jokes? Oh, you got oh. jokes? Oh, okay. Okay. It's too easy. Bro. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no. That's all right. I had to make got, up for I got the, the rookie headphones. move that I, got, I did earlier. I got the headphones. Oh, dude. Oh, you got jokes? Okay. Oh, we're going to go there then. Um, this is going to become a roast battle. This is not going to become an MMA show anymore, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sorry, no, I'm man. sorry, guys. I just, you know, we, no. don't, we don't condone violence of that nature, and we don't condone bullying either. Uh, a little bit. I don't uh, I'm going to pick on your ass right now. Dude. What are you talking about? Just give me give me, give me, me a second. I'm, I'm trying to think of something right now. That's right. I'll give you something off the backboard in a little bit, I'm dude. sure. All right. Well, uh, let's get a quick word from our sponsors. Absolutely, guys. And uh, take it away, my homie. Ringside Beer. Since 2012, committed to bringing fight fans, quality loggers, and ales. Brewed in Anaheim, California, Orlando, Florida, and Queensbury, New York. Ringside Beer is proud to offer fresh beer in both 16-ounce cans and on draft. Look for our flagship American-style lager, Irish-style red ale, or any of our other beers in your area. Shop at ringsidebeerstore.com for t-shirts, hats, and tap handles. Get in touch at ringsidebeer.com. Get in the ring. Be ringside. Ringside Beer. Ringside Beer. Remember, guys, get yourself some uh, black MA tap handles. Please. I just I just talked to the owner on Saturday, and he said that there was quite a bit of tap handle sales. So awesome. get them while there's still some left. There, I think there's just a few left. So if you guys want those black MMA tap handles, get them. Yeah, they're pretty sick, man. Yeah. I like them. My favorite one. If not, we got the American one. We got the we got the Mexican flag. We got we got it oh, all, yeah. you guys. Oh yeah, we got all of them up here. Look but, around. But my favorite one is the black one. Maybe it's just me. I just like you know black everything. So yeah, yeah. It's definitely the hottest ticket. Yeah, it's pretty nice. All right, let's go into fight recaps. The first <clears> one. Let's go into the co-main event. 
Whitaker versus Cannoneer. This one right here was a good fight because uh, there's a lot of um, questions after the fight. Uh, well, leading up to the fight for after the fight. Yes. On who's going to be, you know, the number one contender, who's going to challenge Israel Adesanya. Can Whitaker get it done? Does he still have the juice? Um, can, is Cannoneer the real deal? There's just so many questions. And um, what Robert Whitaker did was put a stamp to his resume. He made sure to solidify that uh, he is not an easy out, and there's no way that he's not going to fight for that belt at least one yeah, more well, time. Dana White, uh, I believe in the post-fight interview, he had mentioned, yes, uh, that's an interesting fight to have uh, Whitaker and uh, Adesanya too again. Yeah, he did explain too that there's um, they broke records the first time um, out there in, in Australia and New Zealand and that area. So, um, of course, that makes sense, especially with the new year coming and things starting to open back up. There's some money to be made. Dude, 2021 is going to have freaking great it's gonna fights. It's going to be lit. Dude, it's going to have some of the best fights because everything has been boiling up for 2021. So, yeah, hopefully I'm excited. we can go back to watching them in person because ain't nothing like seeing some knuckles to some teeth. Now, would you have Whitaker Adesanya as well at the beginning of the year because... Adesanya has mentioned he wanted to fight John Jones at <laughs> International Fight Week because I, I don't know. So Whitaker explained his desire to fight Adesanya, and it almost seemed a, a lackluster. It felt like he didn't really have much desire to fight him um, any at any time time soon it seemed like he didn't mind taking a break and you know waiting so um i wouldn't mind seeing you know adesanya go and fight john jones first and then see him you know drop back down and fight whitaker and i'm sure whitaker does not mind waiting because at the end of the day he's going to have the fight that he wants it's just going to be a little later gives so him time to rest gives him time to so then you probably have that fight when maybe september, september. october yep Dude, that's a long time for Whitaker to stay out. It would be, but if you really think about it, he tends to get hurt. He's had some surgeries. Um, he he looks really good when he does have long layoffs. He's bounced back from these types of long layoffs pretty well, and he's looked pretty dominant, so I don't think it would be an issue. Plus, the guy likes to be at home with his family. Do you think he would... Uh, I mean, let's be Do you think he has a chance to beating Adesanya? If he, he goes again? And fights? No. No? Not even a slight chance, because he did look. Oh, well, everybody has a puncher's chance. If we're if we're gonna, well, not you know, a puncher's chance. But I'm just saying it. Would you give five percent a ch <laughs> dude like a not even a better chance, like just a little bit more than five percent? Seven percent. Yeah, he has a seven percent chance of beating Adesanya. Damn. Damn. Then why make the fight? Just money? Because you have to, and because the money. All right. Well. Yeah, I mean, uh, or you can have Adesanya go up and do what he wants. That's okay, too. Yeah, I think... Because at this point, that division's a little stagnant. Yeah, I felt bad for Kennedy here because he had the, the chance to fight for the title next. All the momentum. All, and it just... I mean, Whitaker put a stop to it, but, I mean, good on Whitaker, but it's just like, I felt bad for uh, Kennedy here because he had the opportunity and he just it just let slip through his fingers. Now, right. granny, he it's not like he was holding back and not punching or nothing. He was trying to go after it. Right. No, he definitely put up a good fight, and yeah. he. It was tough to watch because you seen, you know, you kind of seen him get a little like, kind of heartbroken, once uh Robert Whitaker started throwing some kicks to the head and just you kind of see like just fear kind of come over like I'm not gonna get it done and then, yeah, yeah he, he didn't did. get it done. Yeah. Well, I mean, he learned from it hopefully, and uh, he'll come back better. Yeah, it's always good experience. I mean, because um, he does he after a loss he'll come back and and usually does pretty well. So hopefully he learned from it. He knows what a championship level fighter feels like. It right. was almost a good test for Cannoneer. So right, I think any press is good press, and at this point, you know, for him, any experience championship fights is good experience. So. Yeah. Whether win well, or lose. Well, congratulations, Whitaker, on yep. that win. Yeah. Now on to the main event. This is the fight that oh dude, we were of just, the century. <laughs> dude, I was I was telling my dad, I was like, hey, the fights are starting early in the morning. He's like, What time? I was like, dude, at 11, 11 in the morning. So <laughs> he's like, All right, we'll come he's on like, over. Really? Yeah. Seriously, he was like, Oh, okay. Um I, I could not wait for this fight to start. I I was nervous because we we pretty much talked about both scenarios. 
if Keiichi would have won, it would have been, you know, by knockout. And I could not believe how Khabib was just walking him down in the first round. He was catching shots, too. I was like, oh, Khabib is trying to... I, this he, was a Khabib of... of it was scary. No he, other kind. Like, he implemented a different type of style and a different type of game plan than we ever seen. Um, even against Conor McGregor, he wasn't really too worried about um, standing up with him and striking. Uh, there was times where Khabib would throw those strikes, but it was more of a um, trying to close distance. And in this fight, it was like he wanted to show, I have boxing and I'm going to use it. And it kind of forced Justin Gaethje to be uh, a little more defensive and kind of a little more like uh, fearful. Because what I seen from Justin Gaethje was he was more concerned about Khabib not doing what Khabib does instead of doing what Justin Gaethje does, which would be to throw the knuckles. Yeah, well, it, it kind of uh, the pace in the first round. It was I don't fast. think I don't think Gaethje was even prepared for that. He he expected more of a wrestling match. I feel like if I can put myself in Gaethje's you know shoes and his, his mindset, I feel like right. going into the fight, maybe he was thinking, oh, he's gonna try and take me down. He's not going to box with me. He's not going to strike with me because I have the advantage there. Now, when Khabib was walking him down and striking with him, that was like, oh, shoot. Like, uh, I was like, do you I really didn't have plan the advantage this. here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have the advantage? And it was just crazy how Khabib wasn't even, wasn't even scared of, uh, of, a, of him getting knocked out. He was just walking towards him and just freaking throwing, throwing his hands. And I believe he only got like one, what, one or two takedowns in the first round? Yeah, and it, it was, was very the, minimal. Yeah, and it was towards the end of the of the of the first round where it was like, okay, he took got the takedown, he was on top. I was like, yo, that was gonna be game set match right there. Yeah, you could tell as soon as he had that, you could see um, just like kind of like the the gap in the the the, the desire of like the will to win. It just kind of like that's where it felt like to me because as soon as he got down to the ground, it was like. I did not want to be here. This is the last place that I, I was supposed to be, and now I'm here, and it was so easy that, that we got here. Oh, you're so talking was, about Gaethje? Yeah, so it's kind of like Gaethje. You can see he kind of was just like, damn it, like, I'm already, I already lost. Yeah. he. Uh, That's just pretty, how it felt. Pretty much. Well, he, in between uh, the rounds, he told his coach, he's like, oh, it's like uh, his coach told him, slow it down, and then he, I believe Gaethje said something to the effect of like, oh, I want to, but. He can like he had to keep up with the same pressure as Khabib was throwing. So right, so when someone's coming at you, you have to just give it all your, you know, give it all because I I had a feeling Gaethje could have caught Khabib. Like I I was that nervous in the first round because he was just oh it was the potential was there. I mean, and Gaethje did have a good plan with the leg strikes. I mean, he was um, attempting to chop down that tree, but goddamn man, that tree is like solid. It's like cement. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. It was funny is also too with the first what was the first minute and a half they were kind of just like little feelers, little flinches. Nothing happened in the first what minute and a half, and all right. of a sudden zero to a hundred. Yep, that's it. it. And it and it wasn't even like zero to a hundred where we thought Gaethje was going to be tagging him up. No, it was like Khabib was walking forward. And yeah, we're like whoa. Yeah, once he was like, okay, cool. Uh, no more feeler outs. Let's just get this over with. That's how I felt like I was like, okay, these guys just. Out the window game plans. Let's just freaking just go at Let's it. Just do it. And yeah. um, Khabib almost had it done in the first round. Second round happens. Uh, Khabib gets the triangle submission from the bottom. Yes, and he attempted those arm bars, and he was trying and trying and trying and trying. Well, and, and then he. Uh, so I had read. Well, I have it on the, the oh, okay. slide coming up. So <laughs> should we? Yeah, yeah. Slide over. So this is after post fight. Um, after Khabib won, he says this. Today, I want to say, this was my last fight. No way am I going to come out here without my father. It was first time after what happened with my father when UFC called me about Justin. I talked with my mother three days. She don't want that. I go fight without father. I promised her it's going to be my last fight, and if I give my word, I have to follow this. It was my last fight here. Today is my last fight here in UFC. It was my father's dream. Dustin and Connor are going to fight January. I choke them out, both of them. I'm not interested in this. <laughs> Dude, uh, 
that was probably one of the realest things, man. Like he just yeah. like I already already ran through everybody in my division. Who who else am I gonna fight? Yeah, and and he stuck to the the only fight that he wants to do for the thirtieth fight would be George St Pierre, and it's not gonna happen. So yeah, there's no way that that fight would happen. Um, yeah, but dude, both good. sides consented too. And you want to know who who did not allow that fight? Dana White. What GSP and uh. Both and sides consented. They wanted to fight each other. Well, yeah, but this was the, he, Khabib was down to do that when his dad was here. Now his his pops is not here, so he was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna." That's fight what I'm saying. Lot. That's what I'm saying. They could have got it done. Oh yeah, before everything happened. A long time ago. Well, I mean, they had other plans. Obviously, that was McGregor. I don't give a damn about their plans. All right. <laughs> Dude, you you said, said a hot one today, you man. You said belts don't matter. I don't care either. Let's Dude. you know. Let's make the fights about the. The brand, yeah, know? yeah, man. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I kind of, I feel for him. I uh, definitely, uh, I'm happy that he won the fight, and it was a fairy tale ending for Khabib. You know I'm happy I, he I, won in that manner too. It was kind of like you know, his father wanted him to choke everybody out. That was the plan. Uh, they always stuck to it, and the fact that he still stuck to, um, you know, the overall plan, which is to get a choke, a submission. Um, and I'd read something where he said, like, he didn't want to hurt um, Gaethje in front of his parents. Yeah. So he did a, a triangle instead of an arm bar. And that's – it's respectful and also disrespectful. It's just like, damn, bro. You, so you're saying you could have got me in both ways? Like, you had your way yeah. with me in any way, shape, or form? Like, pretty, but he pretty, pretty much did. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he uh, controlled the fight. And I could not believe the judges – I could not believe they gave two uh, two of the judges gave it to Gaethje in the first round. I was like, "Are right, what fight are you watching?" You know they um, did it, you go, did you score for Gaethje? Because I know you were going for Gaethje. And, and, uh, I'm just saying. I was biased in the sense that it seemed really close, but um, you know when I actually sat back and 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 digested it. No, unfortunately not. It was a pretty dominant fight by Khabib. But well, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm glad Khabib got the finish, but it was it was shocking that two judges gave it to Gaethje in the first round. They reward they reward too much um, uh, walking forward instead of actual action. But and that's the thing. Khabib was the one who was walking forward. That's what I'm first. saying. Well, they well you could see that Justin Gaethje. There were some times where he would like try to push forward, and it seemed like. He was trying to dictate the fight, but it just wouldn't happen. Khabib you think, was just. You think Gaethje was uh, got the rounds because of uh, he threw a lot more. Maybe he threw more punches. Kicks, just punches. Maybe the kicks. But even I, I still I don't know why I was like maybe it's kind of hard to. to uh, well, it doesn't matter because I mean they still gave it to Khabib, but it's uh or it's not they didn't give it to Khabib. Khabib won by submission, but. Yo, that's crazy. Are you saying that there's a conspiracy that they gave it to Khabib? Dude, this whole fight had like some con conspiracies, man. Did you? Yeah. There's so many different the weight things. scale issues. Yes, and I we, we can go into that, but we, there's we have this little slide at Sports Center. Twenty nine and O professional record. Thirteen and O in the UFC. Second longest win streak in the UFC history. Tied for most lightweight title wins. Four, uh, beating fighters such as Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Khabib is leaving the game as a legend, and I and I agree with that. Yeah, you know he definitely made his mark, and it's yeah. an impactful one. Um, and and he's definitely one of the best lightweight fighter, the, one of the best, if not the best lightweight fighters of all time. Um, but when we're talking pound for pound, Johnny yeah. Bones. <laughs> You're Johnny, Johnny Bones. Bones, man. All right, this next one, man. Just saying, bro. Check the Just stats. Saying. Check the stats. Oh, this is this is what I was saying. Uh, this is what Cormier on a white oh, yes, says he here. was transitioned to the triangle against Gaethje. Yes, here, so. so he was saying uh, this is Cormier on why Khabib said he transitioned to the triangle against Gaethje. And he was going to do the arm bar, but he had heard Justin all week saying he would never tap, and he didn't want to hurt him in front of his parents. So he went to the triangle and just put him to sleep. Yo, and that's... even Gaethje was cool with going to sleep. He's like, "There's no health consequences." Um, that I have to worry about by going to sleep. Just a cool little dream. And you wake back up and you're ready to go. Now, so, yeah. Do you think that's true? There's no uh, brain damage to that? I do think that's true. Because, I mean, um, Cause it, it's a very quick cutoff of the oxygen. I mean, if it doesn't go back, then... But there's... Uh, people pass out. Um, not There's not... I don't know. I don't think it. I don't think it's that Yo, bad. Bro, science, like over here. Uh, I don't you, think it's that bad. Where'd you, I get, mean, your, where'd you get your doctor's degree, bro? <laughs> in the streets. In the streets. Oh, Sam Berdu, Mitsu. bucks <laughs> from a truck with a green plus on it. No, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> no, honestly, I think um, 
in all honesty, I really don't know if there's health consequences to that. I don't think so. I think people get choked out all the time. I think it's fine. Um, but if we're being honest, life has a lot of consequences to life. You step outside, you get a little bit of, you know, a dose of bad things from the sun, from the air quality, from the stuff that we eat. So let's um, let's just be real yeah. here and, and you know, say that life's not good for you. Yeah. So I kind of I went, I was glad it, it went the way it did. I felt like it was like the, it ended perfect because if, Gaethje would never right. tap it. If his arm would have broken in front of his parents, Gaethje would have been well, out did, of the picture. He did technically tap because I seen it. Oh no, he did tap. He did but, tap, but then he was. No, I'm just saying like <laughs> if he got if he got caught on the arm arm bar and oh his yeah, arm would, he he wouldn't have tapped. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and that would have put him out for a while, and you know who knows if he's able to bounce back from that. No, yeah. I definitely respect Khabib. He's he's one of the very few men with honor and integrity and pride and ethics and yeah. values and morals. And, yeah. Dude. All that good stuff. Also, the, talking about conspiracies yeah, can we, can over here. Can we please get into a little bit of this conspiracy here? Go ahead, man. So it looks like uh, Cormier explained a little bit about the weigh-in on Khabib's 254 issue. So Khabib Nurmagomedov stepped on that scale at 155 pounds. When he left the hotel, I saw him. I saw him get on the digital scale, and he was 155. Got on the doctor's scale, and he was 155. Now, there was a lot of people saying that uh, Khabib didn't make weight. Like, did you see the scales going back up? They were going to touch. And Khabib was saying, like, no. Or DC was saying, no, it goes back up and then comes back down and balances out. Now, the only person that matters is that guy who's taking the weight. So let's say let's say it does go back up and goes back down and then balances out. Did they or did they not allow it to go back up and go back down? No. What happened was it went up, and as soon as it hit up, he moved it. So if we're being honest here, it wasn't properly done. Daniel Cormier, oh. that's your boy. That's your boy. Oh. You're going to ride or die. Um, I think Khabib did miss weight by a couple pounds, and they're not going to let this fight get canceled or have Michael Chandler come in and ruin Khabib's retirement party. Yeah, can you imagine that that would have happened? Can you imagine if they would have canceled this fight? Especially when it's out in Abu Dhabi. Like, nah, nah. nah. They, qu- they pulled a little fast one. Remember when DC had the putting his hand on the on the on the, on the oh towel? yeah the towel gate yeah yeah uh, you know see but once again it's all coming, hearsay it's all hearsay coming though, from it just, a guy who who is accused of cheating himself always want to be on John Jones case about cheating oh uh, <laughs> he's a cheater himself but just being honest bro do you think the guys were holding him up like this like, yeah because yes bro yeah. you think so yeah. Maybe. I do. That's and then nice. when you see Khabib get on the scale, he, like, grabbed for balance, and then he, like, stayed at a perfect, like, it was just weird, man. It just felt, just felt weird. And maybe that's why he's retiring. He's like, yeah, this was just too much. Not worth it. Well, Dana, after after the post-fight, said he had uh, broke Broken his foot. foot three weeks, four Two weeks. Two toes and a, fo- and a bone in the foot. Something like that. And then he, yeah, three uh, weeks. DC said that they didn't have any, uh, he didn't have any activity. He couldn't run. He could do anything for four weeks, so... <laughs> Monster, dude, that's crazy. I you broke still my had a, ankle, and and that's like, to this day, I suffer consequences. You had a cut weight, and all of that. You didn't even have a chance to train, but I mean, you've been ready. <laughs> yeah, and then man. uh you still had to go fight Gaethje. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane, right? Yeah, you really didn't freaking is. train. Anyways, I think it was a perfect ending. So congratulations, Khabib. Um, dude, I'm excited. I had, I had a chance to paint you, man. That 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 paint was freaking difficult. <laughs> yeah, difficult, but it came out a one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Perfect. Now on to Some fight, fight announcements. announcements. Bow, 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 bow. Bow, bow, bow. Now MMA Junkie uh, reported this one. This is Rob Font versus Marlon Marais. Uh, Marais, yeah. Marais. Poor uh, guy, man. He's had a tough out these last couple of fights, and so now he's got to fight a uh, old boy Rob Font, who ain't um, an easy out himself. No, but this one's gonna be. Uh, I think they're trying to get Marlon. Marlon, uh, a better chance on winning a fight. Yeah, and I mean, if he doesn't win this fight, then there's some real issues going on, and he does not deserve to be in that top bantam weight. Not saying know? that Rob Font's an easy out, though. I'm not saying that. I'm just no, saying, definitely not. But I, I think this is not a layup. But um, this is know, like almost pretty much evenly matched right here. I feel. I wouldn't even agree with that. I think Marias is still a little bit better, a lot bit better so? actually. Yeah, and I mean, and his both his fights that are controversial as of recent, they he he still put on some pretty good performances. So I see that he should beat this guy, should beat him in pretty dominant fashion. We will Hold see. On. Hold on, <laughs> I say evenly matched because if you push 
our Marlon to the limit, he has quit in him. He has quit, what, quit twice? 100%. So I think every fighter has seen that. Like, once you know a fighter can quit or you see the quit in his eyes, like, you know, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's evenly matched. I feel like this is, okay, we're not, not saying Rob Font has quit in his fights or right. nothing like that. I'm just saying, um, as far as Marlon like, does, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can, I can, okay. you know what I'm saying? I can respect like, that. I'm not saying like, well, Rob Font's coming up. Marlon is kind of going down. going down. So it's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of evenly matched. Yeah. I can, I Marlon can, might yeah. have a little bit more skills, but he has quit in him and every fighter have seen that. So. Yeah, he does have some quit in him for sure. But that's December nineteenth uh, in Las Vegas. It's a UFC fight night, so it's free ninety nine. Free ninety nine. ESPN Plus. Yes, sir. And um, we're gonna go on to another fight announcement, which this is, is this was probably one of the bigger ones I feel for the yes. UFC. Yeah, and this I was, was just um, gonna say this is a pretty good fight announcement that I think all of us fans are glad that um, they came to this resolution. And yeah. This here was Leon Edwards versus Kamza Chiamath. Chim Chim Chimave. Chimave. Chimav. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah Comes up. you're better at it than me, so. So it looks like here Leon Edwards addressed his um reported removal from the UFC rankings. Yep. This was uh via Twitter. And he said, I'm still in the rankings. F all the activity. They're lucky it's edited. That's why I said that. Uh, the only reason I haven't fought is because all these so called top guys turned me down. Comes out, want to fight then? And uh, Kamzat actually responded on Twitter and said, I'm always ready to fight. Let's go. Rock and roll, baby. Yo. Now, if he gets through uh, Leon Edwards, bro, I think uh, he's like one shot away from getting the title fight. Well, Leon Edwards is ranked third. He got removed, put back. So, Which is uh, weird. Like, why yeah. Why would they remove him? Inactivity? Are well, you beef, kidding? Maybe they threatened to, you know, to Are release you- him. And they showed him like, let's pull you from the rankings. Let's watch all this, you know, you know, all this uh, kind of commotion that it'll bring. And he was like, okay, I'll fight this guy, you know, dude. Uh, who who was a uh, I forgot what champion uh, didn't fight for a while, and I think it was like was it Cain Velasquez didn't fight for like almost a year and a half. I'm not sure. Some a year and a half, oh, close to two years. I just know they and pull, they did pull not your belt for that now. Yeah. Yeah, but then Connor doesn't fight for like uh, a couple months, and they snatch his 155 belt real quick. Yeah, because that division's too fast paced, too much competition, and Connor is not really the one fifty five goat because he doesn't defend the belt. So he's only fought um, uh, Eddie Alvarez and uh, Cerrone. Oh, and obviously um, Khabib. And Cerrone fought him at seventy. So oh yeah, then no, then it was just it was uh, Alvarez. That's and what I'm saying. Khabib. This guy yeah. doesn't fight it like wait he's Ooh. he likes Walter White. Now Edwards. Comes out, dude. That's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a good fight. Um, When's that gonna be? That is the same night, December nineteenth. So, oh yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that one's gonna be the headliner. Oh yeah, dude. That and that was gonna be exciting because uh, Comes out is just he has a name. He has the he's fighting way more consistently, especially right now when there's so many eyeballs on the UFC. Good, good for him, man. Yeah, this uh, I think he had he. It kind of works out a little bit in his favor now. He gets um, a little more eyes, um, which is what he needs because they want him to do something which he's not going to do, which is to fight back. And he, you know, when the three piece and the soda gets served, you know, he got to slap that plate off the table, and he didn't do it. He um, ate it. So well, let, well, let's see if he can get through uh, Leon Edwards. Yeah, exactly. That's or, the yeah. That's the real out. test. So we'll that's see. That's the real test. Yeah, hundred percent. All right. Next uh, final announcement: We have uh, Anthony Joshua versus Pulev on December twelfth on the Zone. Now, I think this is the very first big fight on the Zone since the shutdown. Yeah, because they don't, they can't get Canelo out there. No. So, uh, and it almost seems like they're throwing a bone to Joshua. A bone. I'll say this is a whole steak, my boy. <laughs> they didn't just leave. They left they meat gave, on it. They gave the bone marrow. It's been uh, aged. <laughs> they just chopped off half of a cow and just tossed it to the guy. Uh, no, I think this is something. Um, this is something that what they like to call in the streets easy money. Oh yeah, this is uh. And what they like to call it in my side of town, dinero fácil, compa. Yeah, this is a. Uh, it almost comes across why because uh, they announced what Tony Ferguson versus uh. Anthony Joshua for mid next year or the, Tyson Fury. The, Tyson Fury, yes. Sorry, <laughs> Tony Ferguson. Damn, that'd be a good fight, dude. I don't know where I'm at. I'm, 
tired yeah, no, of Tyson it. Fury <laughs> and uh, Anthony Joshua did get announced for next year t- and somewhere in 2021, April to June. Mm-hmm. Um, so this right here is kind of like that filler fight. Keep them active. Um, keep them relevant. Yeah. What's, what's the next slide? You're pulling out a Martine today, no, bro. What's I'm just <laughs> looking at that, and I'm just like, this boy's going to have a good, nice meal that night. <laughs> that night is uh, December 12th, by the way. December 12th. And then we have uh, Figueredo versus Perez at uh, for the Flyweight Championship on uh, UFC 255. Or, uh, yeah, 255. Yep. That will be the main event, co-main event, versus is going to be Shevchenko versus, I forgot the other chick, man. That's because Shevchenko is going to win in a dominant fashion. Yeah. And uh, I believe, so this one will be our next uh, art giveaway. You're going to paint Figueredo. Yes. And I'll paint Shevchenko. Yes. Right? Yep. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that will be November 21st, guys. So th- that will be, you'll have a while for that one. That one should be exciting. Let's yep. See. Absolutely. All right, man. Let's get into fights this week. We have three <sighs> big fights. This is exciting one. right here, man. I've been waiting a while for this one. Dude, this one's for Thursday, actually, October 29th. This Hell Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Masasi versus Lima versus on um, the middleweight world title on yeah. CBS Network. Bellator. So this right here is going to determine who is the undisputed middleweight um, champion because I believe it's a vacant belt. So um, they're going to go and uh, find out, duke it out, find out who's the better guy. Now, early fight prediction for me, I'm taking Lima. I think uh, overall he's just going to be a more dominant fighter. I do like Musasi. I just don't see him um, outperforming Lima. You know what? I went for Musasi. I don't know why you've been uh, calling all the people that have lo- been oh losing. Boy, so. ride, <laughs> riding the wave, huh? I yeah, I'm going for Musasi. So you're going for Lima? So that means guaranteed Masasi is going to win this fight. <laughs> uh, yep, put your money in now, boys. Put your money in now. Oh, just fight. All right, then we <laughs> do. Then we have the big boxing fight on Saturday on Showtime pay per view. Davis or Deontay Davis versus uh, uh, Santa Cruz, Leo Santa Cruz. So, yeah, man. dude, Santa Cruz is moving up. What two weight classes? One weight class? I think it was two. I'm not too sure, though. But uh, Gervonta Davis was popping off at the mouth just recently, saying he wasn't going to fight until 2022 and all these things. And so now he's actually got a fight lined up, and it's coming up real quick. Halloween. This Uh, is the first fight he headlines. And have you seen the – have you been watching the All-Axis? I have not. Dude. um, It's just showing his story where he comes from. He comes, you know, from a hard background. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz, you know, he's fighting for his pops, too. His pops has been his trainer. I think his pops is actually, uh, um, he's he was finding something in the hospital. I don't, I'm not sure if you know it's something terminally ill, or if it's you know the Rona. So, well, shout out to his father. Hopefully, he gets um, better. Gets better. And uh, yeah, this makes for uh, all the more, you know, hype. Uh, yeah. Mayweather Promotions presents, huh? Yeah. Look at how tiny that is. With the Mayweather Promotions? Yeah, if it was Connor, it'd be like... It's all big. <laughs> McGregor Enterprise Presents, you know? <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm excited for this one. This one's... uh, This should be a good boxing match. I kind of wish it was on ESPN straight up, because I did... <laughs> yeah, I'm more excited for this fight than I am for the Anthony Joshua fight. Yeah, this one, I mean, you have... It, it almost feels like uh, it should have been on September 13th for uh, Mexican Independence Day. This would have been such a mega fight right here on September. Yeah, yep. Mega fight. I agree. But, that's all good. We're still getting it this Halloween. Uh, <sighs> a bunch of, you know, if you're not going out, you have two big fights. We have uh, Uriah Hall versus Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva's final fight, his yeah, uh, retirement I'm fight. I'm sad. That was what the big the big sigh was for earlier. I'm Dude, sad. I'm going to have to get this poster. If this is Anderson Silva's last fight, I have to get this poster. I'm real man. sad because, you know, I think he's going to go out on a loss, and I hate when these guys do that. Do you that. think so? Yeah, I do, man. I think Uriah Hall is just going to be um, just the better fighter currently at this point in their careers. And I don't see Anderson Silva um, beating him. I think what he did against Adesanya just showed that he does still have good technique, and, and um, but I just don't see it. Oh, you so know what? So put your bets in now, boys, because you might be rich. I'm picking Anderson Silva, man. I'm picking, I've been in, I'm picking Anderson Silva all day. I would like for him to win once again. You know, I like to see these guys right off on the sunset. But yeah, um, yeah. Granted, he is a lot older. Night, Uriah Hall should get this dub, but I mean, I'm kind of pulling for Anderson Silva, man. I'm kind of pulling for Anderson Silva, and I hope he wins. 
And I'm going to get that poster because if that's his last fight, I guarantee, I mean, maybe that's going to be, what, 200 bucks that poster? Probably. Um, a solid 200 bills. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to get bones. that. For sure. All right, man. We have, oh, the art <laughs> giveaway, the Khabib. We're finally at the end of the episode, guys. Thank you for sticking with us. Yeah. Hearing us out. Thank you so much. And so, hopefully you did not just skim all the way to the end. <laughs> right. They're like, wait, we just want to find out who's the winner guy. Yeah, I know, right? All right, so let's, uh, can, can you tell Babe to get off the screen? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that. Anyways, all right, so let's, uh, let's go to the giveaway. Let's uh, pull up the screen and get the, click the spin. Oh, so we got this cool little wheel spinning. Yeah, we, we thought we'd switch it up a little bit this time. Um, so bear with us, guys, but yeah. it looks like here. We have all the people that entered, and thank you again for everyone that entered. Uh, are you recording the screen? I am. All right, brother. Well, best of luck to everyone, and let's see who wins it. Da, 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 Look at that, 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 look at that. Who is it? Who is it? Lewis! Oh, Lewis! Shout out to Lewis, Man, my boy's going to have a nice little man cave set up with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, Triple G and now with the Khabib. Look at that. Well, congratulations, happy Lewis. Happy for you, man. I'm happy for you. Yep. Dude. Can't pumped. wait to send it out there to Texas. There we go, man. All right. Well, congratulations. for uh, Thank you for everyone for participating. Congratulations, Lewis, for winning. Congrats. And, uh, dude, we'll have another art giveaway. So stay tuned, guys. And uh, until next guy, uh, next one. Guess what, guys? We want you to do one thing, and that's one thing only. Be, Be ringside. ringside. All right, guys. Catch you on the next one. Love you guys. Peace.